see, cuties, as the heat turns up, Bosom has decided to close out the end of spring with another Evolus campaign for the ages. Will you be caught up in this May fever? Pokemon. The archaeologists have dug out another fossil. Uh, but don't tell this mistress here, I called her that. In the fray battle, Hawkman pulls out some dustier diva paradigms, inflicting some strong disabling effects with a trade-off of both rate and range. Skill and attack dial is nothing to sneeze at, though in today's demanding environment, even the rarest, most powerful of debuffs are now trivially accessible at guaranteeable rates and board-wide ranges. Besides her data to save game, all Hawkman does is charge fill, eat hot chip, and lie. Let's find the nearest museum and retire there already. <laughs> Lacking actually reliable and conveniently positional supporters, look no further. A cat is fine too. Kachi brings everything you'd think you'd want from a backline support to triple column clearing and provides it in one of the most atrociously inconvenient forms ever. He bestows a skill to allies in the row in front that lets them bestow two damage amps and a defense amp to each other. Because of the strict positioning requirements and lack of guarantee ability, Ketchy will set you up for disappointment, lacking both the ability to support his full team on turn 1 and the consistency needed for farming. When in position on turns 2 and later, he is serviceable, but don't let that fool you. There are plenty of better options. Ah, uh, this is why I'm more of a dark person. Positive. Doesn't happen often, but one should always have a fund ready for emergencies. And who better to fund you than an oil boron? Part of a limited class of units, including Aizen and Horses variant, Pazuzu pacifies challenges plaguing your team with a bounty of debuffs every turn, stripping them at a likely, but unguaranteeable, right at the moment of affliction. Besides debuff denial, you can subdue a selection of other calamities through displacement denial, skill denial, and damage emit, all the while building up his team's charge. Hey, if he's risen you up by now, good luck. Remember says he's a complete freak under both bed sheets and morgue sheets. Oz. The strongest variant in the game. This line trivializes nearly all content in a way the game has still yet to fully balance against. Wait, what? This isn't the variant. Oh. Yeah, Oz's base card here is decidedly not game centralizing, existing as a solution to deal with a problem that doesn't exist. Like Rek, Oz specializes in mixed damage, comprised of both flat damage and scaling damage. With basic tanking, healing, and displacement resistance, Oz braces for impact before countering on the next turn, denying movement while dealing between 6 and 18,000 mixed damage per square, depending on his flat damage trigger nuns once or twice. His damage mode is negated the moment he's hit, so unless he one-shots the enemy and his countering turns with his shaky damage, Oz won't be making it down the yellow brick road. If only his skip designer had more courage. This fan favorite, K9 Twink, is back with a vengeance, coming in with a respectable 27,000 damage per square. Just like in the story, he's quite reliable for making short work of the enemy. Just kidding, in both respects. He's actually not particularly reliable, having two of his more important damage amps unguaranteeable. His roots, with his former mercenary guild, has molded him to play more versatilely. Now gaining team damage amp, piercing, and healing in addition to his more familiar death resistance. Without native damage mint though, his tactics for defense are even more ill-prepared than for his offense. While his peak damage and reliability may be good enough for most quests, he's far from the perfect choice for any. Just like he's far from the perfect Kenji. Quick review of Nomad Showdown variant, who hasn't evolved since I last checked him out. Friendly reminder that permanent 4 stars such as Pazuzu or Oz can be redeemed during anniversaries celebrated in December. If you feel you're still lacking in parts for a triple column clear setup, you may want to consider playing for Ketchi, Tatatomo, or Nomad. But while Nomad still remains the undisputed king of column clear centerpieces, the strength of alternative options have since only elevated. Why not wait it out? The date quest campaign and possibly chapter 15 is around the corner and may have better pickings. That's all for now, cuties. Catch you next time!